Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, everyone, my name is Jim Park, and I'm one of the senior scientists from Millipore Sigma. Today, I would like to talk about our microfluidics-based Salazic live cell imaging platform, uh, which offer precise on-demand control over various cellular environment, and so this enable uh, what we call dynamic live cell imaging. Here's the outline of today's presentation. Uh, I will briefly cover two platforms uh, that can enable creation of more physiologically relevant in vitro systems. Uh, then I will cover the basics of dynamic life cell imaging with brief intro to our cell ASICS platform, which enable dynamic life cell imaging with any existing inverted microscopes. Main part of the presentation today will be applications demonstrating the utility of cell ASICS system with particular emphasis given to membrane-based platforms. Let's start with the background information of physiologically relevant in vitro systems. I think we're all aware that the current tissue culturing method, uh, as shown on the left side of the slide, does not reflect many in vivo parameters. Uh, such as change in temperature, gas, uh, and flow of nutrients, which can all change and fluctuate inside our body. In addition, growing cells uh, on flat tissue culture surfaces does not resemble 3D spaces uh, cells are growing uh, in, in vivo. One of the most established way to create more in vivo-like culture system is to use microporous membrane platforms. Uh, two examples are shown here. Upper images show Sertoli cells, and bottom images on the slide show Keiko cells. In both cases, we're comparing indicated cells grown on tissue culture treated plastic surface compared to the microporous, uh, microporous membrane surfaces. Notice how cells grown on membrane surfaces acquire more in vivo-like morphologies uh, with well-defined polarized physiology. Cells on plastic surfaces uh, simply grow as a flat monolayer of cells. In addition to membrane platforms, there is an increasing awareness that microfluidics can create more physiologically relevant culturing systems. Uh, when coupled with appropriate setups, microfluidics can offer user-defined, on-demand control of cellular microenvironment, such as temperature, gas, and media perfusion, while enabling continuous live cell imaging. We'll cover much of the microfluidics in today's talk. Let's start with some background information on dynamic live cell imaging. I think by now it is well established that live cell imaging offers tremendous biological insight over more static imaging due to its spatial and temporal information. For example, let's take a look at this static image in the middle of the slide. Uh, what you see in the middle of the slide is a bunch of T lymphocytes, which are loaded with a calcium indicator for S and dye. Uh, to simply put, not much insight can be gained from such a static image perhaps other than what appears to be a different level of dye uptake as seen by different fluorescent intensities among the T cells. However, if we are to take a time-lapse image of these T cells as shown in the bottom of the slide, we start to gain deeper level of understanding and awareness to the spatiotemporal dynamics of the cells at single cell level. In this particular experiment, calcium indicator loaded T cells were kept without disturbance, indicated as a resting T cells, uh, and then activated with ionomycin, which causes an increase in intracellular calcium level. Very important and key step in the activation of T cells. While these are snapshots taken from actual time lapse image, uh, already a couple observations can be made, which were not possible uh, when we're just looking at the static image in the middle of the slide. For example, we start to notice that the T cells are actually oscillating 
uh, in their calcium level even during resting stage. And also that there is a significant level of heterogeneity among the T cells uh, in terms of their calcium responses. Let's play the movie itself to better appreciate what is going on. Taken together, dynamic live cell imaging offers analysis of cellular events at single cell level, thus enabling study of population heterogeneity. Study of cellular biology as a function of microenvironmental perturbation. Uh, for example, we can study calcium responses of T cells before, during, and after their activation, while we we'll control when and how T cell agonist, uh, in this case, ionomycin, is added. Other common example would be dynamic gas control, where cells grown under normoxic condition are subjected to hypoxic condition and then brought back to normoxic condition. And time-lapse images are taken under these dynamic conditions. Last but not least uh, is the time dimension, where we can now study various cellular responses, such as morphology, movement and velocity, intracellular signaling, as well as a cell-cell interaction as a function of time to obtain spatiotemporal information of any given biological system. Now let's take a step back and think about some of the challenges in terms of building or buying a system which will enable dynamic live cell imaging. Dynamic live cell imaging, while it is a very powerful tool, has its challenges. Uh, this is an image from Wikipedia and nicely demonstrates the complexity of such a system. They're very large and complex systems with high price tag, requiring well-trained scientists to operate. Uh, also, in all cases, additional do-it-yourself components are required to enable perfusion and fluidic capability in order to create true dynamic imaging system. These components such as pumps and perfusion chambers with associated controllers will further create complexity and increase prices. Uh, now, I do want to point out that there are simplified versions of such systems that exist. Uh, however, they're very still expensive, well over $70,000, and also simpler systems tend to be closed systems uh, with limited capability. Switching gears, then let's talk about our Celasic platform. Uh, what would be the key advantages of our system? To start, it is a true turnkey product with integrated environmental control system coupled to microfluidics plate where cells will be cultured and imaged. The system controller is the size of a typical 13-inch laptop in X and Y dimension. Uh, and if you are to stack four of these laptops, it will become equal in height as well. It is extremely portable and was built with a mobility in mind. The controller enables software drive an on-demand control of temperature, gas, and fluidics of the plates, and so is making dynamic live cell imaging experiments possible. And it is connected to the plate via vacuum manifold. Software is extremely intuitive and enables step-by-step -step protocol building where each step can be built uh, with a user-defined time, temperature, gas, and perfusion parameters such as flow rate. The plate has standard 96 well footprint. Image and center show one of our plate preloaded with a color dye to show individual layout of the fluidics. As you can see, the plate is divided into six inlet wells on the left side and two outlet wells on the right side connected to the central tissue culture chamber area. Each of these inlet wells are connected via microfluidic channel to the central tissue culture chamber where cells are grown and imaged. 
Uh, and then there's an exit channel where waste and used media from the cell chamber will be delivered to the outlet wells. As you can see in this cartoon, for each row, indicated as a group one, two, three, and four, all the individual well within the group are connected to tissue chamber area via individual microfluidic channels, uh, which are colored lines. This enables up to four independent experiments uh, to be conducted per plate. When the plate is connected to the controller uh, via manifold, media or reagent in each of the inlet wells can be pressed down via positive pressure. This will then move the media or reagent from that well into the tissue culture chamber area and then will exit to the outer wells. Essentially, this creates a system where any desired media or reagent can be precisely delivered to cells in the chamber area at desired time for specific duration and with specific flow rate. Uh, since the plate can be temperature and gas controlled, we now have a system uh, that, can be, uh, that can offer ability to control cellular microenvironment uh, in dynamic, on-demand fashion. In addition, the plate material is also made of gas permeable polymer to allow dynamic gas control. Uh, and the bottom of the plate is made of N1.5 glass for clear imaging, including confocal applications. The uh, last thing I would like to mention uh, is that the, uh, since the, these are microfluidic plates, we also introduce specific micro dimensional features that can be used for certain applications, such as the imaging of suspension cells or maintenance of chemotactic gradient. Now let's move on to the uh, main part of the talk. Our system can be connected to two independent gas outlets. So in this example, we can create normoxic and hypoxic conditions using gas switching ability. The middle image shows fluorescent intensity of reverse oxygen sensor, RTDP, which will decrease fluorescence with the increasing oxygen concentration and vice versa. Fluorescence was measured from the tissue culture chamber of our plate while we changed gas compositions dynamically. Time is indicated on the x-axis. RTDP fluorescence is indicated on the y-axis. Arrows indicate the time point at which gas switching was initiated. As you can see, RTDP fluorescence uh, increases as we put tissue chamber under hypoxic condition, starting at T equals two hours. You will also notice when we put the tissue chamber under normoxic condition, uh, around T equals six hours, fluorescence starts to decrease, uh, which we then switch back to normoxic condition at around T equals 10 hours uh, with the ensuing increase in RTDC fluorescence. The image on the right shows cellular responses under hypoxic and normoxic condition by measuring expression level of HIF1 alpha, which is a key transcription factor under cellular hypoxia. RTDP fluorescence is indicated in blue line, as expected, uh, as the cells are subjected to hypoxic condition, as seen by the black line. And then later on, uh, as the cells are subjected to normoxic condition, we see fluorescence of RTDP decreasing, uh, which in turn is followed rapidly by decreased expression of HIF1 alpha. We're also looking at gap intensity as a control uh, in purple line, and it shows no meaningful change under changing oxygen levels. Next, we'd like to show you a live cell movie generated using BioTracker hypoxia live cell dye. This is a cell permeable live cell dye 
which becomes fluorescent under hypoxic condition inside of cells. Here we're looking at A431 cells loaded with and without dye after 16 hours incubation under hypoxic condition to show its specificity. Now let's take a look at the uh, live cell movie. Next, we will look at the autophosome formation under hypoxia using fluorescent lysosomal marker LC3. Under hypoxic condition, cellular stress will induce formation of a punctate autophosomes, uh, and this can be visualized and measured based on live cell imaging. Let's take a look at the movie. Next applications, uh, we're looking at intracellular trafficking of proteins. In this case, we are examining internalization of fluorescent EGF receptor upon EGF activation. You'll notice upon the addition of EGF, the receptors uh, start to coalesce together, which then gets internalized to endosomal compartment with characteristic punctate patterns. Uh, again, let's take a closer look uh, with the live cell movie. Now, I want to cover perhaps one of the most widely investigated cellular behavior, uh, which are migration uh, and invasion. Uh, for this type of studies, membrane platforms are very widely used. In addition, uh, membrane platforms are well characterized and established for barrier models as well, uh, but this will be covered uh, in later slides. For now, let's start with migration and invasion applications using membrane inserts. For these, a pore size of the membrane uh, is critical, and in most cases, 8 micron pore size is the most commonly used ones. The difference between migration and invasion is really about the presence of ECM gel matrix. If the assay is performed without ECM gel in presence of chemotactic gradient, then it is a migration assay. If the assay is performed in presence of ECM gel, uh, then it is an invasion assay, as cells need to move through the ECM matrix towards the chemoattractant. In both cases, directional movement of cells towards the chemoattractant can be measured simply by removing cells uh, or cells and ECM gels in case of an invasion assay from the top side of the membrane and using cells on the bottom side of the membrane. Here are some example data generated using 96L millicell plate uh, with 8.0 micron pore size. Plots on the right side of the slide show fluorescent intensity on the cells uh, from the bottom side of the membrane after migration assay. For both plots, cellular fluorescence is plotted uh, on y-axis. Plot on the upper right shows the effect of serum concentration on cellular migration the concentration of serum used are indicated on x-axis. The plot on the lower right shows inhibitory effect of RGD peptide on cellular migration induced by 0.5% serum. Inhibitor concentrations are indicated 
on x axis. Now for invasion assay, which is essentially a 3D form of a migration assay using ECM gel matrix, there are some couple key takeaways when setting up the assays. The bar graph on the right shows level of cellular invasion, reflecting the level of cells that moved through the ECM matrix and were present on the bottom side of the membrane. You will notice that concentration of ECM gel uh, plays very critical role. It is very important to dilute the ECM gel to identify optimal assay concentration. If concentration of ECM gel is too high, then cells cannot invade through the gel as the matrix is too hard, uh, and you will get pretty much zero uh, signal from the cells. If the concentration of ECM gel is too low, then there will not be enough matrix to cause invasion, which in that case, the assay will simply become a migration assay. Also consider that ECM gel itself also contains chemotractin, which can reduce signal to noise ratio. Uh, in this example, best concentration uh, would be between 6 to 12% gels. While migration invasion is widely performed on membrane platforms, they do not allow live cell imaging for, for obvious reasons. Uh, so here we now show how microfluidics can enable live cell imaging of cellular migration while maintaining chemo uh, gradient. We have a microfluidic culture chamber that is connected to two parallel flow channels. Uh, cells are cultured in the middle chamber and chemotractin is perfused onto an adjacent channel. As you can see in the images at the bottom, cell uh, will migrate towards the presence of chemotractin. Uh, let's take a closer look uh, with the live cell movie. Next, I would like to cover live cell imaging of suspension cells, which pose unique challenges uh, due to their non allele nature. As you can see on the uh, image at the, uh, at the bottom left, uh, during live cell imaging, suspension cells will move up and down, making it impossible to image cells at single cell level. However, if we introduce microfluidics sealing feature, uh, as shown by the cartoon on the upper panel of this slide, then we can confine the cells under single focal plane and enable clear visualization of cells during live cell imaging. For example, we'll be able to maintain in great detail cell-cell interaction uh, of T cells with that of antigen-presenting B cells. Uh, these are snapshots taken from a live cell movie. Uh, now let's take a closer look uh, with the live movie itself. Here's another example where we are examining T-cell apoptosis at single cell level. 
uh, we're using CD95 activation to induce program cell deaths. And then visualizing the cellular events uh, using caspase 3 specific apoptosis pro, uh, as well as uh, annexin 5. Let's take a look at the uh, live cell movie. I just want to cover a few more things. Uh, one is the long-term culturing aspect using microfluidics. Since we are using very small volume of media with continuous perfusion, we can culture cells for a very long time. Shown are examples uh, for 21-day neuronal culture on the left and four-day culture on the right. Of course, uh, most established way to do long-term culture is to use membrane platform. Let's take a look at 21-day CACO culture performed using plastic tissue culture surface versus 0.4 micron polycarbonate membrane. You'll notice dramatic differences between plastic surface and membrane surfaces uh, with later uh, producing cells resembling uh, in vivo polarized uh, morphology. Let's take a closer look uh, using confocal imaging. Lastly, I want to close off uh, by going over some 3D applications using ECM gel. Cells can be loaded onto our microfluidics plate with ECM gels and allow to form 3D structures as shown on this slide. Uh, we have a movie playing uh, on the next slide. Now the uh, summary and closing remarks. Uh, so in summary, we have actually a wide range of plates uh, that specifically caters towards a specific customer applications. Uh, our plates can be broadly divided into mammalian plates. Uh, this can be identified the letter M in the front, uh, as well as that we have a suite of plates uh, that are useful uh, for microbiology, live cell imaging applications as well. Uh, and these are shown on the lower right uh, part of this slide. We are also enjoying growing list uh, of publications. Uh, our papers are very well cited in high ranked prestigious journals. Uh, currently, we have well over 700 publications uh, citing our platform uh, based on the Google Scholar uh, key search. So in summary, Cellular biology is complex uh, and it's dynamically changing uh, in terms of the microenvironment uh, as well as uh, its responses. Dynamic lifestyle imaging is an indispensable tool, therefore, to better understand these events. Uh, also, last but not least, use of microporous membranes uh, enable creation of more physiologically relevant 
in vitro culture systems. Uh, with that, I, I would like to thank everyone for today's webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, and our website, uh, simply just type in cellasic.com, uh, and there you will be able to find uh, much more information. Once again, thanks for your time.